we go. This is my version of the swamp cooler uh, for which I found many videos available online. I'm not reinventing anything. I wanted to share uh, the results of uh, building my own. I am going to post up a video from a, a guy that's put many, many different videos on how to build one and uh, that was very helpful. So I just want to up there, you should see them now. Um, these are the parts that I used uh, for the, the build. So basically, essentially a five gallon bucket uh, that you can find at uh, uh, any good uh, hardware store. Five bucks. Um, a little DC pump that you want you wanna, uh, to, not to consume too much uh, wattage or uh, amp hours, if you will. Um, as uh, some of you may want to run these uh, little thing uh, in a in an RV settings and so on. So this little guy is is drawing a mere four watts. So that's pretty good. I bought it off a uh, a website for I thought it might have been eight dollars. Very cheap. I can post up a link to where I got mine from in case uh, some of you are wondering. But eBay may be a good place to uh, to hunt for these for sure. Um, and then the tubing I had is uh, three three eight of an inch. I had to heat it up here to insert it over the uh, the out the the output of uh, of the pond. But other than this, that's pretty much um, uh, the, the the part I use. And then the most important part, along with the fan, of course. Well, they're all important, but. Uh, uh, it wouldn't happen with that this pad here. So this guy is a humidifier pad I bought. Uh, it might have been done by uh, uh, Bionier. The fan itself uh, is a 12 volt fan drawing a mere uh, one amp, so 12 uh, watts. And um, it's uh, it's one that I got off at uh, Walmart. So it might have been uh, it might have been 20 bucks or something. Uh, not even. It might have been 15 dollars. And I cut the wires and I removed the mounting uh, uh, bracket for it because I only needed the, this piece. So it's fairly straightforward. As you can see, I already drilled the holes. So what you want to do is leave enough room at the bottom of the bucket for the water to, 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 to fill in so that you don't have to continuously replace it. Um, and so I drilled the holes basically based on how wide my pad was making sure that I would I would expose as much of the pad as possible through the uh, the bucket while keeping enough uh, rigidity in the wall so that this thing wouldn't fall apart on me when I carry it around which I will and um, and and the other thing that I had to do uh, I, I quickly realized that when I inserted this thing uh, I would need it wasn't uh, large enough so I needed to put in something to keep it in place and spread it out on the sides of these walls so of, of the, the the bucket and so I, I basically cut in a, a small piece of a 2x4 which I drilled with uh, stainless steel's uh, screws right here and fairly straightforward I don't suspect this thing's gonna go bad anytime soon uh, with the water if it did I could replace it very easily now the last thing that I have here is the um, uh, a vegetable uh, plastic tray that I I, I, I use basically had to improvise since I realized that by the time the pad was wet it would it's so heavy that it falls down so you need to support it and uh, in my case because it was it wasn't uh, uh, wide enough to sit directly at the bottom so I found this little plastic tray in which I use a Dremel to drill holes ensuring to ensure the water is going to go through notched a little piece at the edge here so that it could nice it could fit nicely over my uh, my piece of 2x4 and this way water can still circulate freely in there and that's supporting my uh, the pad all around it so let's see when it's on its in show you what it what it looks like so but I mean I, I think you you know what to expect so uh, see it's covering at the bottom and so it basically uh, so now it's it's not snugly in place against the wall when the water is in it expands a bit and it, it's going to do that making sure that the air doesn't get drawn out directly to the fan without having to go to the pad obviously that would uh, defeat the purpose
So, uh, the other important thing uh, being the pump. So the pump, you uh, you need to make sure that at the extremity of the tubing, uh, you have to ensure that you're drilling holes all around the perimeter, which I did using a small drill bit, as you can see. Uh, try and space them evenly, which is what I did, and then I try. I, I tested out the pump to see what would be the uh, uh, the uh, the volume it, that would go and that would drip right. So once that's done, you throw it in there at the bottom. Make sure that uh, the uh, the DC wires are sticking out in uh, in one of the holes. I'm going to make a final design that's going to be a little nicer. But this is for the purpose of this video. Uh, it'll do the trick. So yes, I could also make this uh, tubing a little less long, but for the time being, I thought it would it was it was good enough. So the other thing that I I figured was that you need to have a way to support the tubing to keep it in place here. So I added a screw here to keep it in place here, and then I'm using some of these small alligator clips uh, to basically snag it in place and it does the trick for me that was uh, I'm always trying to use what I have around the house or in my garage and so that's the uh, the, the, the the basic setup and the, the last thing that's missing to make this whole thing work is to using the lid make sure you have a a fan that's going to draw in the air Draw in the air and uh, and allow it to, to to come out cooler, but with humidity, of course. So uh, using a Dremel bit, I basically uh, measured out. You know, measure twice, cut once is what they say. I didn't do that, and uh, but that's why I'm sharing these are best practices, right? And so by the time it's in place, then it 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 stays nicely in there going to find a way to secure it in place using uh, clips on this side so that it's not moving around so and then I just need to connect it I don't have that now I'm gonna finalize the wiring and that's the uh, the final result once it's all it's not it's not that ugly I mean it, it uh, if, if you want to use it in a small apartment where it's dry uh, hot and dry then that would do the, the and this entire thing is going to draw roughly 16 watts, so not even one and a half. Uh... <sighs> Alright, here it is running. So, as of now, the, uh, the fan is exhausting this way. So the air comes in, goes through the pad that's all wet by now, and you can feel it. And, uh, and so what I have here is a little thermometer that's telling me that right here on the right hand side this is coming out at 14.8 Celsius and the current temperature in here is 23 with 31 percent humidity and you, you'll see I mean I you'll be able to see that humidity level is gonna go up I know it's working because uh, well first of all the temperature uh, but the humidity is low enough for this to be effective so all in all eight degrees Celsius difference is really really nice impressive out of 16 watts you can't beat that and this can double as a humidifier for those of you that have a, uh, a house that's fairly dry um, so in the winter you may want to use it as a humidifier I know I will and so for the amount of money that I paid for this thing so there you have it that's a completed result very uh, very effective so, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'll try and do my best to answer as quickly as possible.